Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, I'm actual Dracula, yeah, you know that. And welcome to interview with the Dracula. Uh, my uh, guest tonight, uh, I'm excited for this one. He is an uh, uh, a comic book writer. Sorry, he asked me to say Eisner Award winning comic book writer, artist, and perhaps uh, most importantly, a human being? Question mark. I guess we'll find out. Uh, you may be familiar with his work on Howard the Duck, Daredevil, Sex Criminals, Newburn, or if you're lucky enough to uh, have a comic book shop in your area that carries some of those uh, little-known small press publications, uh, often created by drug-fueled maniacs and schizophrenics, you may have come across a book called Batman, which... Um, which he currently writes, actually, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, we're we're going to get into that. Uh, anyhow, uh, please welcome to the show Canadian heartthrob slash problem child Chip Zadarsky, who is pictured here. And so, um, hold up. Who is this chiseled specimen of a man? That's, uh, that can't be. Uh, that's not Chip. Is that Chip? Oh, no, no, wait, N never mind. No, that's actually artist Jorge Jimenez. Uh, worked with Chip on Batman, but yeah, yeah, no. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, that, that's Chip. That's Chip Zdarsky, yeah. Yeah, that makes much more sense. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Now, this is Chip Zadarsky's. Uh, welcome, Chip Zadarsky. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, so, it looks like we lost Chip. So I'll just have to. Uh, I'll just give. I'll just give him a minute to recover here. And. Uh, Let's see, a breather. Sorry, just oh. need a moment. All good. Okay. Uh, yep. Thanks for being here. You know what? It's my pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Uh, there's nowhere I'd rather be at five o'clock on Good Friday. <laughs> I yeah. I I'm I'm glad to hear it. Good. Uh, I was good. hoping that I'm would be your glad. sentiment. I'm yeah. Glad you're glad. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyways, yeah, this is uh, this is interview with the Dracula. So we can we can talk what about whatever. But I did have some some questions. Uh, yeah, you know, nothing too personal. I hope. Um, but, yeah, fire uh, away. That remains to be seen. Um, I will just say take take a moment to say a quick hello to the chat. There's there's only a few people here right now, but uh, I did you know. I did want to do this just as it gives me uh, an excuse to say uh, hello to her. Hooray. Hello to Las Cruces. Hooray. There we go. Yeah. And uh, Legion of Comics, hello. And Legion of Comics friends say, hey, Chip, thank you for contributing to Comics Curing Cancer 2023. We really appreciate it. Truly my uh, pleasure. Uh, awesome did we do it? Did we cure cancer? Uh, you know what? I haven't got any updates on that. Um, Wouldn't it be amazing if it was comics that did it? Like, like you guys raised just enough money. It was just enough for them to cure cancer. So, so they actually had to say, well, it was the comics that did it. Yeah. It was the comics. Yeah. I hope so. Maybe someday. someday. Uh, what's going on? Uh, Sector 2815. We've got DJ Links here who says, Chip Zdarsky is better than chocolate chips, which are better than microchips, which are greater than Chips the Cop Show. Yeah, that math, that math works. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you weren't spending Friday with Drac, how good 
could it possibly that's be? That's true. I could just be spending it with my friends and family. Yeah. I, I mean, who needs them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Roscoe. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not highlighting, uh, your comment there, DJ. Uh, that's, we're going to just skip over that one. Um, it, uh, yes. Thank you, Roscoe. Um, so you've had a busy year, I guess, maybe more than a year. It's been, a, I'd say it's a busy 10 years, but yeah. 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 The older I get, the more busy it feels because yeah. of my body can't take it anymore. Yeah. As you can see the gray and <sighs> the bad. I mean, it suits you. Thank you. That's any, uh, I guess, condolences or whatever. Is that the right word? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm growing into it <laughs> as an elder statesman of comic books. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Elder statesman. Yeah. If I could be the elder statesman of, of anything, I would use that term constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so, but I know this year has been particularly busy, but you've also had a few things come to a close recently, yeah. uh, which I wanted to talk about so that people don't forget about them. And, you know, we'll start seeing as how this interview, this show is interview with the Dracula. It only seems right that we start by talking about Dracula. All right. Now, hear me out. OK, yes, because, of course, you know, of course, if you have questions about me, feel free to ask. But I'm actually referring. Yeah, to that probably won't happen. That's OK. Uh, I'm not really prepared for it so, anyway. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm actually referring to one of the characters in All Nighter. Uh, which wrapped up in February with issue 15. And for the uninitiated, that's Chip's uh, vampire superhero book with art by uh, fellow Torontonians, Jason Liu and Paris Selene. Yeah, now, yeah, it's a Toronto crew. And the editor's mm -hmm. even Toronto-based. That's right, Allison O'Toole. Allison, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, and, oh, look, I got a... I got a there's what a professional all. operation. Look at I that. Know. Just it's, boom. Yeah. I'm going to blow your mind with this one. <laughs> That's the cover for All Nighter issue one, guys, if you haven't seen it. So now vampires, um, they're cool, they're sexy, yeah, they're scary. Everybody wants to be a vampire, right? And everybody and their brother has written a vampire story. This is true. He, even that hack, James Tynan, had the gall to write a Dracula comic. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, cool. yeah, he he couldn't come up with an actual original vampire story, so he <laughs> did Dracula. No. It's fine. And he had he had to use Dracula, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. Speaking of James Tynan, can I get you on record as saying Department of Truth more like Department of Poop? I would never. I would never say that. Okay. You can't. Well, ne I neither mean, would I, because I'm actually a fan of Department of Truth. So one of us said it, but I am, and James beat me uh, in the Eisners for best writer. So right, anything so I say just doesn't hold any weight to it because right. everyone would be like, well, "Yeah, he said it," but he's like the second or third best writer, and James is the best writer. So yeah. So yeah. So what I do is garbage compared so to So he's him. the elder statesman, is what you're saying. He's younger than me by about ten years, so that's uh, it's actually super frustrating for me. <laughs> I know <laughs> to be thoroughly trounced by someone uh, ten years younger than me who's more handsome, uh, more talented, um, the wealthier. Uh, yeah, just all around a, a better person too. If you talk to people in the comics industry, so mm -hmm. yeah, James. James is. Uh, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, you know he's he's a great guy. So you know, fuck him. Mm hmm. Frankly, right. You hear it. You heard it here first, folks. Department of Poop. Anyhow, back uh, uh, back to Dracula or vampire. Yeah. Vampires and Dracula. Um, so anyhow, a lot of people make comics and movies about vampires. But why you, Chip? Where did uh, where did this story come from? Uh, was it to get over your irrational fear of vampires? Or were you just bite curious? Well, look. First of all, that's terrible. Yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a longstanding vampire fan. Um, okay. I wrote uh, I wrote my independent study back in um, grade thirteen English on the vampires of Anne Rice because oh. I was a I was an absolute goth. I was a hockey hockey haired goth in Barrie, Ontario. So oh, if you can picture that, the black trench coat, the hockey hair, the onk <laughs> necklace. I knew there was a reason I liked you. And Sometimes I carry a briefcase. <laughs> Sometimes I carry a briefcase. Why? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and I was really deep into the novels of Anne Rice. It, it was the perfect blend of um, uh, horror and homoeroticism for my 16, 17-year-old self. So mm -hmm. I, was, I was heavy into it. 
Uh, yeah, and like uh, Jason Lowe, he um, we did um, Afterlift together mm-hmm. for Comicsology, and we wanted to do something else. And I think he was the first person. First, he said, "Whatever we do, let's not do superheroes." I'm like, "Oh yeah, of course not." Right. And then, uh, and then uh, immediately we had the idea to do uh, 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 superheroes. Yeah, exactly. So, I was gonna say it's it's more of a superhero story than a vampire one. It's like there's yeah, who happen I, to be vampires. Right? I, I'm trying to recall. I think he was the first one to be like, oh, let's. I want to do a family thing, like about a family of vampires in a diner. I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, that's fun. But like, what do you what do you add to that? Where's the the kind of danger from? Come, where's the danger come from? And the kind of the superhero extension of that of like a vampire being mistaken for a superhero and just kind of going with it, um, and then kind of uh unraveling all the laws of the supernatural creatures as a result of that so all the other supernatural creatures start to dress up as superheroes because then they're not seen as vampires or ogres or zombies or whatever mm-hmm. um so yeah that, that's kind of what got that rolling and like we did a comicsology which is great because they just kept green lighting it <laughs> so we ended up doing like 15 issues and dark yeah. horse has been printing them and they just announced this week that they're doing volume three um come december i think so it'll be nice to have them all together and jason's a toronto guy and he's like i've known him for god like almost 20 years it feels like right because like, he was like a, an intern at my old studio back in the day mm-hmm. and then he he went and did um pitiful human lizard Pitiful human lizard yeah that's right yeah and, and it's so good so good and he kind of fell mm-hmm. out of comics for a while and like but he's so fast and so talented that i approached him to do this and uh now he's basically running marvel comics and if yeah. he sees if he sees me as an event, he's just like, "Oh, you are!" Like he's just he's just he's real big time. And now, oh man, what a what, what a hot shot, eh? I mean, the lesson there is never help anyone. That's uh, you know what? That's a good lesson. You know, hard learned, but yeah, it's hard hard learned, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, this fucking that guy. There we go. The balloons. We got to keep this going. Feel. Um. Anyways, I I loved All Nighter, and I won't spoil anything by saying who he is. I mean, you find out early on, but yes, Dracula is in this comic. And I will say, like most Dracula stories, he's the goddamn hero. And maybe not everyone will agree with me on that, but in this case, I think they will. Uh, he's just might be more conventional, what most people would conventionally refer to as a hero, because he's not just biting people. He's, you know, he's doing heroic things. He's helping people. He's helping people, which you're not supposed to do, according to you. It's true. Right. It's true. Yeah. 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 I play it out in fiction. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that uh, wrapped up. And that was, uh, you said, you know, that Comixology kept renewing it. But would you say you're kind of done with that now? Yeah. Um, no, we've got, uh, yeah. The end of volume three is the definitive ending of the story. Mm-hmm. It felt um, like it. Yeah. Yeah. Usually when I end stuff, I'm just like. It feels like the end, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've yeah. been uh, lucky enough to not have things canceled on me, except for maybe Star Lord back in the day. Um, right. And in the back of my head, I'm always like, "Well, if they make a TV show or a movie, and I can make a lot of money off of this thing, then maybe I'll bring it back." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fair enough. Papa, Papa need. Uh, <laughs> Papa need. You know what I'm saying when I say Papa need, right? Yeah, I think I do. I know what yeah. you're saying when you say Papa need. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're on the same page here. I think you know. I think you know exactly what I mean. Just pop a need, <laughs> pop a need, pop a need. <laughs> Hooray! Like that. Go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, I'm I'm gonna move on to the next thing because we've only got about an hour, so I want to go through. There was there's more I want to get to than than this. But guys, uh, as we said, it's a comicsology original. So if mm-hmm. you can't get your grubby mitts on a physical copy, it's readily available like go to amazon it's right there you can read it online right now yeah volume one and two were printed through dark horse so they're available in comic shops too yeah 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 um okay awesome now the end of another era shall we say is uh the final issue of new burn hit the stands this week yes and uh i must say bravo sir what a series Mm -hmm. thank you this this was start to finish one of my favorite titles over the past two years, easily. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, how do you, how do you feel now that it's like you know it's come to its conclusion because you've been writing this 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 for yeah it's been what it came out in twenty twenty one I think end of twenty twenty yeah it's kind of the pandemic project right um, yeah. 
it, it's weird. Like when you end the comic, there are several points where you end it. Like I ended it when I wrote that final page, which mm-hmm. is like, you know, eight months ago or something like that. Yeah. And then you end it again when the art comes in. And then you end it right. again when the lettering is done. And yeah. you send it off to press. And you right. forget about it. And then it comes out and it ends again. And then we're going to do a collection. So that's the end again. So it, yeah. it never, you never quite get the feeling of closure on stuff like this. It, and um, you don't get it at the same time as, as like the reader, of course, right? Yeah. 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 Like it's, it's, a, it's a very different process than when you consume mm-hmm. entertainment. Um, yes. I mean, it's, it's nice just because, um, like we planned it for 16 and I knew what the story was. And I knew what the ending was basically since we started. So it's very satisfying to kind of write that final page and go, ah, there you go. We did yeah. it. We did it. We weren't yeah. canceled. Yeah. You know, things didn't fall apart along the way. So yeah, yeah that's been good. I, I honestly don't see how it could have been. I thought it was excellent, like through and through well, Jason thanks. Phillips artwork, like outstanding every issue. Yeah. And he set like a perfectly gritty tone that I like elevated the whole the whole comic as well. He's so, so good. I think he's even younger than James Tinian, if you can't if you can believe it. I, I can believe that. Yeah, Sickening. but <laughs> it is. Yeah, su- super talented. He's like um, a, he's a he's a man after my own heart because like he did everything. Like he you know I I wrote it, but like you know he did he did the 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 penciling, the inking, the coloring, the lettering. Like he just he he does all of that. He manages to do like two comics a month. Plus, like yeah. colors for his dad's work, That's, which is unbelievable. Yeah, it's just not fair that there's some people like that out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So certainly, don't help those people. They don't need any. It is um, weird to be angry at your artist for being that good and fast. <laughs> yeah, because you, you know, I, I you benefit chastise from it. him. Be like, just make it. Can you make it like worse? You yeah, know? it's like it's but, like this is good for me. Why am I? Yeah, so angry all the time. But yeah. Um, now, I'm a huge fan of police procedurals. Law and Order is in constant rotation in my house. Oh, yeah. And uh, Newburn for me, could stand toe-to-toe with most any other police dramas or, or mysteries, whether it be a comic book or a TV show. Cool. And Thanks. you do mention in the last issue that, that like police procedurals were a big influence on New- Newburn. So what are some of your favorites, uh, whether it's comics or, or shows? Um, it's not even police procedurals, but it's like... Like the mentalist, I don't know. I'm like I'm a sucker for the right. mentalist. Yeah, yeah. You know, just kind of kind of jokey and fun and light, but you know, still dealing with serious topics like House, like any kind of any kind of show where there's like kind of an asshole lead, and mm-hmm. they wrap up a mystery with every episode. Like Law and Order is is definitely kind of you know back when it first started, CSI was kind of my jam. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I really gravitate towards those ones where it's yeah, the asshole main character. Yeah. <laughs> Who's yeah. just smarter than everyone else? Even like, yeah. even like Sherlock, it's like, yeah, exactly. Like, he's yeah. an asshole. He's a total asshole. He's an asshole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that's a balancing act, like with Newburn. Like you want to make him cold and kind of distant, mm-hmm. and you know, an asshole, but you still want to be able to root for the guy. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a bit harder to do in comics than on TV because on TV you kind of have the the genuine kind of sex appeal sometimes of the character. Yeah. So like, you know, everyone can swoon over Benedict Cumberbatch or whatever. Um, even if he's being an asshole. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit harder with comics. That's true. Though that's that's one of the things I think they got that I enjoyed most about that show, that Sherlock show, was just what a cold uh kind of basically sociopath he was, mm-hmm. right? But that's how he was able to be Sherlock. Yeah. Um oh and spe- yeah, and speaking of Sherlock and Law and Order, have you seen Law and Order Toronto? Not yet. No, yeah. I know. I, I I just heard about the they've got a Rob Ford episode, which I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah. Um. I mean, prepare to be a little disappointed. What? I know. Well, first of all, it's Law and Order Criminal Intent, so it focuses only on the investigation. There's no courtroom drama wow. in it. You don't get the courtroom scenes, which to me defeats the purpose of calling it Law and Order. Like, just call it a different show because I yeah. think Law and Order needs the courtroom. Yeah, it's called Law or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, so, I, I, I want to see that Rob Ford one, though, because like, I yeah, was, I was I mean, working at the newspaper during that time, and yeah. uh, it was wild. Yeah, um, definitely check it out. It is a show. It's it's Canadian, that's for sure. But one of the detectives is just way too smart. He knows way too much. He's mm. basically Sherlock Holmes. Like, like he's, he's a Toronto homicide detective, but he has this encyclopedia of, encyclopedic knowledge of the most obscure things 
Mm. So um, it's an odd show. It's definitely the weirdest Law and Order I've ever seen. Is it also playing in America, or is it only playing here? I have no idea. It's on the City TV app. I didn't even know they had one of those. Mm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so I don't think it is. I would. I honestly be surprised if anyone outside of Toronto has even seen this thing. Yeah, um, it's weird because Law and Order. You think it just it would just play everywhere because everyone just yeah. wants more Law and Order. But yeah, if it's if it's that Toronto-ish, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's because it's set in New York. Everyone likes yeah. things set in New York. Exactly. Yeah. Now, would you ever re- consider revisiting um, this world? Not necessarily that of New Bern, but just like straight up crime uh, mystery. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it all. I mean, it always depends on whatever the idea is that I have. Like, yeah. I didn't really intend to make um, a crime comic, but then I had the idea. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm making a crime comic now. Yeah. Like, I'm, I've, I've always said I'm not really very good at um, developing a career because I don't really have a, a thing that I do, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of the smart way to do it. Yeah. Like, you know, Daniel Steele writes romance novels. Yeah. John Grisham writes legal thrillers. Like, there's a reason you kind of do a thing <clears throat> and kind of stick to it. And I'm like, and draws babies. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, hey, you know, yeah. uh, go check out Jughead and go check out Daredevil. Yeah, go check out New Burn. Like, it, like the range doesn't make sense. I can't imagine anyone being a fan of my work because it's just like, who would buy all of this stuff? But well, I mean, yeah, but it's that range that makes me a fan of you. I think just oh, the fact that you're able to, um, you know, approach so many different genres and just be excellent at them. Oh, I um, appreciate it. I think I mean, oh, those, the, in, the big the big thing for me is just like you don't consume one type of story exactly. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so I just kind of translate that to oh I want to make all the types of stories as well that I enjoy reading and mm-hmm. and watching. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, like I just mentioned, Scott Young. That's another person as an example. It's like I thought he just drew these baby covers. It's like oh he's actually an excellent writer. Like mm-hmm. you know who knew? Because yeah, he doesn't just do one thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so where were we? We were with New Burn, which oh, I you know what? I had a slide to show that, and I did. That was, that's the final issue of New Burn. Yeah. Um. So we have those series off your plate, and before I get to before I get to uh, president and future endeavors, we got to plug this bad boy in celebration of its tenth anniversary. Sex Criminals, the seven hundred twenty page complete edition, which was released this week. And um, so it's like this, but bigger, right? Like I, I haven't had a chance to get it. I got this is volume one. That's so volume like one. This, but much bigger. Like it's look, basically, how, look it's, how big it is. Guys. It's so big. It's just like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's exactly that. So well, you you're saying you hoped it looked like this. So there you go. There's yeah, it didn't quite that. turn out like that. Yeah. But it's still it's, it's still, still pretty thick. It's, it's still it's a chunky earthy. chunky yeah. thick boy for sure. Yeah, that's ten uh, years of drawing. Yeah. Anything anything else you can tell us about that? It's obviously the complete series, but is there anything else there? No, I mean the the weird thing is like it's it's kind of stripped down. Mm-hmm. Like um like we've put out, you know, the, the collections like you have. There's like six of those. And then we did uh three hardcovers, which are kind of very deluxe. Um and everyone kept asking for an omnibus. I'm just mm-hmm. like, why well, I hate those. I hate the giant blocks. You know mm-hmm. the hardcover ones, like they're just they're nut crushers. Like you can't actually I, read yeah. them. Yeah. Like I I, 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 I think most people buy them as like art objects. They just want to buy this nice thing, know it's complete, put it on their shelf, and that's it. And I personally, I hate that idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just seems like a waste of paper and resources. Yeah. Um. So so this is basically just the story. Like I, I we took away all the back matter, all the kind of the extra stuff in the backs of the hard covers and the soft covers and just made it just the story. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I just want people to be able to buy it yeah. in one place and read it like a novel from beginning to end. So, so there's right. no, there's no frills or anything on it um, to kind of keep the price down too. So, yeah. So it's kind of, it's the addition that I want people to buy mm-hmm. and maybe one day when uh, um, I desperately need money, we'll put out a giant um, <laughs> hardcover <laughs> omnibus and I'll, I'll uh, I'll renege on everything I just said. Right on the fifteenth anniversary. Expect yeah, that. exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, so that, of course, um, <clears throat> you did with uh, uh, Matt Fraction. Oh, before that, because I was just, I knew I knew I had a thread going here, and this was it. I didn't. I don't want people to forget 
about this, um, which is uh, Scotty Young, everyone's favorite chibi artist, who just announced a whole whack of covers he's doing. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to forget that he's responsible for this masterpiece right here. You know what? He Go is responsible. Up. He is responsible for it. But I got to say, um, I art directed that cover. Yes. And we sent in the sketch. I said, you know what this needs? It needs a waterfall coming out of the end of that dick cliff. Yeah. So I, I was very, very proud to have added that note to this. That, cover. that is excellent. I, I, Guys, go look up the uncensored version. I'm not about to get dinged for showing it because it's it's real it's graphic. Disgusting. I mean, it's Scotty disgusting. Young puts so much detail into that tip. It's, it's unreal. yeah, yeah. He was clearly <laughs> staring at one for a long time. Um, yeah, these were these were fun. These were, I guess, by issue eleven, we decided to do triple X covers. Mm -hmm. So we had a new artist for every issue and just let them go wild, do whatever they wanted, and we polybag them, um, which I think cost us more than it made us. Because we, I think we yeah. broke the polybag machine at the factory. Because <laughs> we, because we, the weird thing is, like when you're doing an image book, like you're paying for everything, right? We pay for the printing, mm -hmm. and so we had to pay for the polybag. So we had to order like something ridiculous, like sixty thousand polybags to, like pink polybags to actually mm -hmm. do this properly. Um, so we ordered them all in, and then they they printed it and they put them in the polybags, and you could see right through the pink. Right. And so they had the to purpose. then we had to buy a bunch of black poly bags. So they ended up like printing them, putting them in black poly bags, then putting the pink ones over it. And we broke their machine doing it. We eventually kind of figured it out. We just kind of did it with cardstock. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah right. it was a very expensive <laughs> endeavor. But it was fun to pay our friends to just make ludicrous dick drawings yep. for us. I was very happy with that. Um. So yeah, guys, if you haven't, uh, I'm looking forward to this because I haven't, I haven't read the whole, the whole shebang yet. Yeah. But uh, what I have read, I love. Um, and uh, yes, there are some some dicks in it, as you said. Now, um, of course, this is written by Matt Fraction, and he was recently he recently did an interview with John from Word Balloon, and he mm -hmm. had some rather uh, nice things to say about you. Said insane. I mean, great run on Daredevil. Great run on Batman, everything he's doing, and and yeah, again, like you said, the guy that was drawing your dick jokes for you and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, I don't. Yeah, I made it, I made it sound yeah. I, I oh, phrased no, that no. poorly, and I regret it. I want you to know. But Way to go, Chip. And then in Sex Criminals, we'd have a fedora come tumbling into frame, and John would pick it up and wear it for the rest of the issue, but he wouldn't do it because he's a coward. Right. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like Matt. <laughs> Sounds like Matt. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a deep fake or anything to me. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what got cut off there, I believe, what he's referring to is an idea because I was writing Howard the Duck at the time, and he wanted mm -hmm. Howard to like lose his fedora. It rolls off page, and then in Sex Criminals, they pick up the fedora and put it on. Yeah. Um, uh, and the reason I said no to that was because, um, and this is a this is a weird Marvel story, but. Um, the creator of Howard the Duck had conflict with Marvel back in the day. Like mm. he would work for them, not work for them, come back, be angry at them, not angry. Um, um, it was a whole thing, Steve Gerber. And uh, but he ended up working for Marvel. Uh, I forget what the series was, but um, it was a Howard the Duck thing. And uh, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened, but he had a, a scene where like Howard gets like beat up, put in a black bag or whatever and taken somewhere and then at the same time he was doing a book at image comics called like destroyer duck in which a character like pulls the bag out and like reveals this duck character and then like subs out another duck character to put back into the marvel book <laughs> and so the, the implication was that from there on out it wasn't actually howard the duck in the howard the duck book okay yeah um and uh when he did that the editor was furious just furious um because he took his job seriously and this was like a slap in the face because he just hired him to do this thing and then he did this like weird switcheroo i didn't know about that anger and so when i was working on howard the duck people some of the questions were like how how do you get into it how do you work on it like knowing that it was like so tied to the original creator who, mm -hmm. who passed away since then and i just said well it's easy because like i just treat it like it's not howard the duck because he swapped it out 
you know years ago right so it's I not just, actually him so yeah. it makes it easier for me just to pretend like it's not actually howard the duck it's my version yeah. of howard the duck or whatever and the editor uh who was originally <laughs> on that previous book heard about that and he was not happy <laughs> he's like he's like that that was like one of the most stressful moments of my life and like i can't have you be saying that that's not actually howard the duck <laughs> as a result of this i'm like oh, oh sorry <laughs> i mean that's somewhat understandable yeah yeah I kind of get that yeah. yeah 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 it was it was definitely it was, it was still a fresh wound for him so i i felt bad about yeah. that so i'm on the record saying that is actually howard the duck all right very good Thanks. um speaking of matt fraction uh i think that most of your readers are aware at this point that you, sir, are a fraud, and uh, you were not born Chip Zdarsky, but that is, in fact, a pen name. However, I'm not sure that as many people are aware that Matt Fraction is also a fraud, as mm -hmm. that is a pen name as well. So which yeah. I want to know which one you came up with your pen name first. That's a good question. I actually don't even know. Because like, we both met each other in the early 2000s on like comic book message boards, and we both already had the pseudonyms. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I have no idea. I should actually ask him and find out. It was yeah. definitely early two thousands. Like for me, it was like two thousand one, two thousand two, maybe when I came up with it. Right. When I was like working at a university newspaper, mm -hmm. um, and maybe Fraction was the same, kind of around that period too. He was doing music videos and things like that, and I think he kind of picked a cool name to do all that stuff. But yeah, we're both frauds. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure I could do a Google deep dive and figure it out. Like, look at dates of publications and stuff but uh, i don't know if i'm gonna bother doing that yeah it, 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 it goes before the publications for sure especially yeah. from that so um yeah there's something freeing about doing work mm -hmm. under a different name like like yeah. it definitely kind of like separates your ego from it a little bit like like mm -hmm. oh chip did that not steve that's that's yeah. that's easy to kind of if people hate it it's they just hate yeah. this guy chip if they love it they love this guy chip I, yeah, I get it. I mean, I, I like using my name because I'm already famous, right? Yeah. Everyone's yeah. heard of Dracula. Yeah, um, that's true. That's true. And so to add the actual to it, just to really reinforce it. Yeah, the, yeah. This is actually Dracula here. The real one. Mm -hmm. Matt Fraction is a cool name, though. I use fractions all the time at work. Seven eighths, three sixteenths, all those. Oh, the, those are the top fractions right there. They are. Now, Seven eighths, three sixteenths? Yeah, seven eighths, three sixteenths. I use those, some other ones too. Have you ever considered using a mathematics based pen name like that? And if not, may I suggest something like multiplication Zadarsky or well, chip, chip integer? Was, for a while, I was chip Pythagorean. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, it took chip too long. Integer it took too long like, to spray paint uh, on side yeah. buildings, which is kind of yeah. my thing. Yeah, it's weird. Like he picked a cool name and I picked a not cool name. I don't know. Uh, you know, I have a little bit of regret over that. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's a cool name. It's certainly a unique name. I think sure. Chip Integer is a cooler name, though. It sounds it like is. a science fiction writer. Yeah, Chip it Integer. Is. Um, all right. So let's let's move along now. We talked a bit with the fractions. Um, another book I'm, I'm looking forward to now uh, that this other stuff's wrapped up. Out May 1st, guys, The Whisper Queen, another Black Sand oh, Tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three issue sequel to The White Trees, which will also be re released the same day, right? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's been a long time um, since yeah. that first series came out. It was it was basically two oversized issues. Yeah. So it wasn't quite enough to make a collection, like a trade. So we're doing like a kind of a, again, chunky, thick. Uh, single issue kind of format for that just yeah. to kind of catch people up and also it's it's maybe my favorite thing i've ever done like i was like, i was gonna say that like that that surprised me a level a little because you mentioned um that in your your sub -sec, that this yeah. was because you know you yeah you work in a lot of a little a lot of genres but you never struck me as like a high fantasy sword and sorcery type and yet yeah. i'd say this fits comfortably into that so no i mean i i i i was on record years ago saying I hate fantasy. <laughs> um, in fact, uh, when Sex Criminals came about because Matt and I wanted to work on something together, and originally our idea was to do a fantasy book because we both hate fantasy, and like yeah. our friends name drop Ed Brubaker and Kieran Gillen would always go on about Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. and we were just sick of it, and we just kept making fun of them every time they'd bring it up. We're just like, oh, we're going to do a fantasy book. We'll show you how fantasy is should be done. Um, so we obviously didn't do that. We did Sex Criminals instead. 
but um but yeah there's kind of a bit of an escapism thing for me just the idea of creating a world where like there isn't racism or sexism or anything where you could just kind of do what you want like mm-hmm. that, that that's always been the weird part about fantasy to me it's just that like they still have kind of the intrinsic problems of the world <laughs> kind of wrapped up in them yeah uh, and a lot something of like it... game of thrones i'm just like yeah why is <laughs> why yeah, does that stuff still example. exist here <laughs> yeah. yeah um so yeah just the idea of, of of creating kind of just this beautiful world and like chris anka and matt wilson were the artists on it and i worked with chris on star lord and like he just draws beautiful people and and he's an amazing designer like mm-hmm. part of the problem that uh, arose between volume one and volume two is that he's such a good designer he was hired to be the character designer for the spider-verse movies that's right so yeah. so he just he basically he's like he told me one day he's like yeah I'll, I'll get to volume two in about six months like i'm on this this spider-man anime movie i'm like oh that sounds fun and then uh that six months turned into many years because it became a much bigger project and then turned into a sequel and turned into another mm-hmm. sequel so he's like he's pretty wrapped up um, but he's so good at character design that like seeing him seeing him do that in this fantasy world where you can just kind of come up with anything it's just like it's awesome and it's just it, i felt like that first volume was just like it ticked all the boxes for me in terms of my favorite kind of story mm-hmm. and um and it just looks so good and being able to kind of have the beginning middle and end and have it a really nice tight story um yeah i really liked it and so i really i want to kind of revisit that world so that's why the new one the whisper queen is coming out it's a sequel but it kind of features new characters right yeah 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 i mean that's what i loved about it too like you said it was a nice tight story it absolutely was and like you it's not long but you did manage to um i am glad you're doing a sequel because you you and 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 chris together built you know we got to see one section of this world you built and it definitely felt like yeah this is something you've got something here for sure it felt fleshed out very fleshed out yeah Uh, thanks yeah yeah and like yeah the sequel obviously expands it more Mm -hmm. um yeah it's just beautiful like yeah i I can't can't think enough chris's artwork's fantastic anyone who's seen who read white trees as well knows yeah he draws beautiful people and also one hell of an erect penis as well he does he does yeah 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 now, he, i don't know he has not man he didn't i don't think he got to showcase that in the spider-verse stuff unfortunately but. not not consciously yeah <laughs> yeah not consciously but the, all the web shooting you know <laughs> that's you true there you, you go yeah 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 it's funny uh, yeah, it was his request like he wanted to do kind of a sexy story mm-hmm. uh he definitely wanted kind of like a, kind of a grand sex scene and orgy and uh, i'm like yeah absolutely and uh the second volume also has one because why not yeah <laughs> He's yeah so good at drawing it um when he because we, we met doing star lord for marvel and um you know i usually talk to artists before we start and I, I i asked him like you know what do you what do you like to do how do you like to work and he's like well i like to choreograph my fight scenes i'm like yeah no problem i'll, I'll leave those open and we'll figure out dialogue mm-hmm. And he said, and I would like uh, Star Lord to lose his shirt once an issue. I'm like, all right, I can do that. And so I did it, but I forgot to do it for an issue. And so he just he just took his shirt off at some point. <laughs> but it was like it was like a weird one where like he was like wearing a sweater, and then he got beat up by bad guys, and he wakes up, you know, tied to a chair, and his shirt's gone. So they beat him up and took his shirt off, and then tied him to a chair. And I'm just like, I don't know if that's if that makes any sense. And he's like, whatever. <laughs> hey, I guess it doesn't have to make sense. I guess maybe they were just trying to humi- humiliate him a little bit. I know more. by showing off his beautiful body, <laughs> yeah, beautiful glistening body. <laughs> um, uh, K-pop just walked in there. Did I miss the hot dog questions? Well, I just asked one. I did mention the uh, Chris Anka's erect penises. And yeah. uh, speaking of penis, Batman, uh, you write Batman. What's that like? And that's literally my only Batman question. It is. Um, it is momentarily uh, a thrill, like when you when you mm-hmm. kind of get the job, you're just like, "Oh, I'm writing Batman," and then you and like you type things like about Batman will be all tears off down the street. I'm like, "Oh, that's fun," um, but then it's it's basically just a job, like writing Howard the Duck, right? Like the, the scripts right. are still the same length. You're putting the same amount of work into it, which is hopefully you know you're all, mm-hmm. 
I mean, there's technically more pressure because DC Comics relies on Batman to do well, <laughs> or, or else DC Comics disappears. But um, yeah. but I don't think I'm that big a part of that, really. I think you put anyone on Batman that's halfway decent and it's going to sell well because people love Batman. Um, so yeah, it's like it's just it's a job. It's a job like yeah. any of the other ones. Um, now, obviously- I enjoy it. Obviously, with your creator and stuff, your total control over. It. Is there is there a certain amount of editorial pressure from editorial on on Batman? Like certain things you got to do, or they pretty much just let you do your thing. I mean, you kind of know instinctively what you mm-hmm. need to do. Um, I've often said, like working on Daredevil, um, I was able to do like I don't know 10, 12 issues of him not in costume. But if right. if if I'm gonna write a Batman or a Spider Man story where they're not in costume for an issue that's a problem like right. i'm gonna hear about it like 100 yeah. percent. and like and with a character like batman like if i decide to like give him a haircut i gotta i gotta run that up the chain because that yeah. affects every title he's in it affects toy lines and games and stuff like people need to sign off on this this stuff right like if you give him a, a mullet they gotta make sure everyone he's got a mullet in every other book a hundred percent a hundred percent that's painstaking labor you have to bring in like some crack artists to just like to add that beautiful fringe at the back yeah um so yeah i mean there's so there's not as much pressure and um and you kind of like i said you know the rules like i know what i can get away with and what i can't get away with like i'm not uh i'm not gonna have him just like open fire on people right like uh, i understand as batman he represents a company like we've got to like are you ever tempted to have him do that sure sure <laughs> just go all michael go, go all michael keaton where he just like the batmobile pops up some guns he just starts blowing things up yeah i mean actually that that was kind of related to the point i was i was gonna get to um because uh uh you know the like I, I've really been enjoying this, um, you know, because every writer has their own take on the character and brings their own unique vision to, you know, that contributes to the never ending evolution of Batman. Mm-hmm. What You know, what I would say at this point is like a monolithic figure is Batman. He's not just a comic book character. Um, he is. He is the one character. And this is what was said to me when I signed up to write mm-hmm. Mark Wade. God bless him. Sent me an email congratulating me. And he said, um, just so you know, um, Batman is the is the um, the character who's had the most stories written about him in the history of mankind. Yeah. Uh, good luck coming up with a new story. That was his email, his full email to me. So you know, <laughs> fuck you, Mark. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it, it's a tricky proposition coming on because yeah, everything's been done. Yeah. But I always I always think back again, not to always talk about him, but I always do. Matt Fraction once said that um working for marvel and dc is like being in a cover band like you're putting your spin on the song Mm -hmm. but but you you don't necessarily you're not the creator of the song uh which which makes total sense like you know it it does uh, on on, on most of my projects like if you break it down to its essential component like my daredevil run is essentially just like another frank miller style daredevil gets beat down builds himself back up (laughs) <laughs> you know that that's it's the happened art. to him it's happened to him a few times i think <laughs> yeah yeah and, and, yeah. and you kind of have to have that happen to these characters yeah. to kind of yeah. remind people um, it's part of what makes cool. them that, that character right yeah they yeah. need to be able to fight back and and, mm-hmm. and build themselves back up um so it's it's a it's a classic song that was done way before me but hopefully i'm putting my ska my ska sensibilities onto that song and really letting it you know <laughs> pull in a new audience <laughs> I, I you know i think you have been because you know what you've done like so far what you've created with fail safe and how you've incorporated zer and r you know it's not what i was expecting but it's been interesting and it is for me most certainly still batman it's absolutely a batman story but it's not just batman of course because when you're writing batman you're also writing the joker right mm-hmm. i mean it's inevitable and you know, we just had the Joker year one storyline wrapped up and where we are now with the latest issue, 145, without giving anything away, um, are we, uh, you know, we're getting your take on the Joker Batman relationship and how that's evolved. And so I'm sure there's a better question in here somewhere, but <laughs> it, it was your plan the whole time to make Batman seem crazier than Joker because there's definitely times through some of his arcs 
where Batman is more unhinged than than the Joker. Uh, I mean, that wasn't like a conscious thing for sure, but but mm-hmm. clearly I'm I'm putting Bruce Wayne through the paces and like yeah. kind of the things that are actually wrong in his mind, whether it's his fault or the fault of others. Um, right. And and yeah, having like I I, I knew early on that I was definitely going to have him and Joker in a cell together, mm-hmm. in which Joker's kind of like poking and prodding and and seeming a bit more sane than than maybe Bruce. Right. Um, yeah. 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 I mean that that's it's it's. I think every writer at some point does their their Joker Batman story, and I didn't want to do like a big obvious one, like having Joker kind of like not the mastermind, just kind of kind of mm-hmm. fucking things up as we kind of go along. Um, yeah. has has been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying it, and yeah, it's like yeah. There's there's been moments where Joker, there's like moments of like clarity almost where it's like yeah, he just he doesn't seem like Batman. Definitely seems crazier in 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 yeah. comparison in the these situations yeah the, the um, joker year one thing was a fun challenge mm-hmm. um just to kind of dance between the raindrops of kind of the continuity and present a joker where you're kind of in his head a little bit more and he's not quite fully formed um yeah yeah and i i, I enjoyed writing the character it's the second time i've written a character the first time was it was a harley quim 25th anniversary special and uh um, I had him like putting all of Gotham City to sleep or whatever, and I I tried to get DC to allow me to have him dressed as Sandman, mm-hmm. like Joker, but with like teased out hair and and a black robe and stuff. And they're like, there's so many emails we'd have to send Neil Gaiman, we just can't do it. <laughs> yeah, so. I it, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Very disappointing. Yeah, I don't know if it's wor- is it worth writing all those emails to Neil Gaiman? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Phil's got a, a great question, or no, comment, rather. He said, uh, as a kid in high school, I asked author Harlan Ellison what it was like to write Daredevil. He answered it was like writing a blind Batman. Is that is that true? Uh, no. <laughs> no, actually, it's not. If Harlan Ellison said that, I I'll normally never disagree with Harlan Ellison, uh, but I'd say he's he's dead wrong there. They're very different characters. Mm-hmm. Very different. Um Batman is sure of himself. That's the big one. He's right. highly competent and very sure of himself. And Daredevil is yeah. not sure of himself. Daredevil yeah. questions himself a lot more than Batman does. Um, there's less of a duality in Batman than there is in Daredevil. Like Batman is like, you know, it's that classic thing. What's the mask? Bruce Wayne or Batman? You know, but he's one in the same. And he kind of like, you know, plays up. Yeah. Plays up the, the various parts. Whereas Daredevil is just like, that is like a classic duality themed character mm-hmm. like the lawyer oh, yeah. who goes out and beats people up at night the catholic who dresses as the devil like it's 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 beautiful the, the the fighter who was raised not to fight by the boxer dad like it's just there's so much there's so much there that makes daredevil uh wildly interesting and um uh a, a morally interesting character whereas batman is so straightforward that uh yeah yeah yeah, it's a very they, different experience. They, but we, I think it's safe to say they both got a lot of baggage. They both got a lot of baggage, but yeah. I think Daredevil definitely responds to his baggage more than Batman does. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair to say, I think. Um, so moving on from, from Batman, one of my favorite reads this year has been Avengers Twilight. Oh, cool. First of all, before I even get to the story, the book is just gorgeous. Mm. I mean, Daniel Acuna's art is stunning. Yeah. And uh, of course, you've got these uh, great. I keep forgetting I have these slides. There's Batman and yeah, Joker. Yeah. You guys know. You Jorge, guys know Jorge like, Jimenez is just. Jorge is just. He, unstoppable. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable uh, what he's doing. He's he's already since he started, he's become one of my favorite Batman artists ever. He's just yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah, he's the best. He's so fast too. Like I know he's a hunk, yeah. and he's mm-hmm. fast, and he's the best. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, not fair that he's not gone. fair. Not fair. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna move right along from Jorge. I forget that guy. Uh, Avenger go. Twilight. So yeah, and also you got these great covers from Alex Ross. Also amazing. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah that's, Simona, that's a treat. Simona Bianchi variants as well. I mean, yeah, just so good. Um, now the you know worth the price of mission alone story's not too shabby either nice. i mean <laughs> no it's, it's great so to, uh, let me let's see if i get got this right it's about the avengers but they're real old 
Now, mm. who doesn't want to read that? Captain America, but he's sundowning, right? Perfect, perfect. Of course, uh, I'm kidding. It's like an event. It's it's like um, it's Avengers, but they're po- in a, in a uh, in a world that's possibly a not too distant future, right? Similar to other dystopian stories, uh, like say uh, uh, Watchmen or something like that. H Day, The Watcher Act, Heroes Band, and and controlled curfews. All this dark, disturbing, dystopian stuff. Um, yeah, while being and, nestled in a utopia, like that. I think that was kind of the key, right, for for yeah. me to kind of get into it as a writer. Is that it, it's actually great on the surface. Like everyone, yeah. everyone seems happy walking down the street. Like all the ads and shiny things, and people are drinking their lattes, and it's all fine. And it's all the stuff kind of underneath. Like who has to suffer for that to work? Which is the big question in the world. I'm so glad you said that because I, I was going to ask you, um, well, first of all, how this project came to be. And did you already have Daniel and Cunha in mind for it? Because because of what you just said, what he's doing in these pages, the combination and the juxtaposition of like the dark, grizzled uh, vigilantes and mm-hmm. the underground against this bright neon cityscape like they, that they're they live in. That's just perfect. And uh, he nailed he's, that. He, he's amazing. I mean, the, the project started back in 2019 and the editor, Tom Brevoort, um, who I'd worked with on a bunch of projects before, approached mm-hmm. me with it. And it's something he'd been thinking about for a long time. OK, like I, I think he would tried to get it going earlier and he had a lot of notes and ideas uh on it as well um he's a really smart guy and really understands story and so he kind of presented me what his document was and he's like i want to do a future avenger story like does any of this resonate with you like what are your ideas and so i came back to him with um what i was thinking and we uh daniel was like the second artist on the book we we talked to another artist i won't say who it was in case you know uh we work with them again in the future um and we, we kind of talked through in the story and then things kind of fell apart and the artist uh, had to do something else. So, so, um, so then Tom was like, how about Daniel Acuna? I'm like, Oh my God, like, that's amazing. I think he was just wrapping black Panther at the, mm-hmm. at that time. And I was like, Oh, he's perfect. Cause he can design everything. Like, like that's what the book needs. Cause it's, it's labor intensive because not only are you kind of redesigning all the characters, like you're, you're redesigning every setting. Like there's no, there's no old setting in this book. Uh, they visit Avengers Mansion, but like, but that's it. Like everything is new, yeah. and yeah. the whole world from the street scenes to the bases or whatever it has to be totally reconceptualized. Um, so uh, Daniel, Daniel came on board, and like, and right away I was like, oh, this is the best decision I think any of us have ever made, because uh, he obviously makes it um, so much better than what my words are. Like, but, but the downside is like, cause he fully paints it all. Yeah. Um, it took him a long time. So I think he started yep. drawing it in 2020 and it's six issues. Wow. And like, they're, they're just coming yeah. out. They're done. And that's a yeah. nice part. Like by the time issue one hit the stands, <clears throat> like all six were locked. So yeah. they're coming out regularly, which is amazing. Um, yeah. Cause Marvel, cause we started kind of just, just as a pandemic, started up basically and uh and so marvel kind of held off they're just like okay like we don't know what the market's gonna be we don't know like um keep plugging away at it we'll figure out uh when we should release it and and so yeah we had a lot of time and space to work on it i mean it definitely i think comes through in the final product which is is just excellent through and through um there's you know there's two issues left now i believe of the of the six and yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and as someone who doesn't regularly read Avengers, this feels like it captures the spirit of, you know, what makes a good superhero team book, especially the odds are against them. Uh, like the, the truth of the evil they face is hidden. It's not what you think it is. And ultimately, but ultimately there's hope, which we all know Cap Captain America is all about that. Yeah. And uh, plus, you get some really great surprises that you know I'm not going to mention here. But th- yeah, this has been one of my highest recommendations uh, th- this year. Uh, absolutely, is Avengers Twilight. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's um, I, I like being able to write the stories where you can just kind of jump in 
mm-hmm. like right from the beginning. Like the continuity books are fun, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but it's a different beast. And having having something like this where it's six issues, when it's done, it'll be a collection that like you can hand anyone who's watched an yeah. Avengers movie or anyone who used yeah. to read Avengers comics and they can oh. they can get it right away. That's all you all you need to know is that Steve Rogers used to be Captain America. If you know that, then you're going to you're going to enjoy it. I I think I think part of the reason we were able to get this kind of uh, greenlit Mm -hmm. um, because they're also they're oversized issues. Each one's 30 pages and it's six issues. Um, uh, I think the success of a previous book of mine, Spider-Man Life Story, which followed that same model Mm -hmm. was six issues, 30 pages each. The fact that that did well and sells pretty regularly in, in collections. Um, I think that that gave Marvel the opportunity to go like, oh, we could probably just trust Chip to do kind of these six issue things that are out of continuity and they'll they'll hopefully sell. So yeah, I'm hoping to do more things like that in the future. I hope so too, yeah. And what was it like for a brief moment to write dialogue for, for Matt Murdock once again? I, did you miss the little guy? Or... Oh, in Avengers Twilight? Yeah, but well, I guess the, no, once you, but yeah, actually, you wrote it a long time ago. Yeah, I wrote so, it. I wrote it before I finished Daredevil. So yeah, yeah right. I know. So you didn't miss the little guy. You were still I didn't right. miss the little guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I get that. Well, um, speaking of which, did you see Daredevil's new white costume? Did you wish you thought of that? Um, I did. It's actually in my my run. Oh, okay. So, oh, good, job. good yes. fucking job. Yes, it's great did. research. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just I saw a thing about it today. I forgot that yeah. I was surprised. Was I was surprised ex- to see it like uh, yeah. pop up again. Yeah. Because it was it was very it was a specific thing. It was actually oh fuck oh, I can't believe I'm bringing him up again. It was a math fraction idea. God damn it! <laughs> I know I know because I was uh, <laughs> at the end of my at the end of my run. I have Daredevil walking into hell, and I told him like yeah, I'm, I'm doing this thing where like as he walks down like the fire kind of reveals a new mm-hmm. costume. And he was like, Oh, there was like an old daredevil story where Electra is kind of reborn and mm-hmm. it's all, it's all white. It's like a pure of spirit thing. You should just do it all white. And I'm like, Fuck, that's exactly what I should do. Yeah. So Matt fraction, my, my hats off to him. Yeah. Maybe I should have just interviewed him. <laughs> you probably should just interview Matt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I've given him ideas too. Like when he was working on uh, Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, mm-hmm. um, he put like I don't know if you're ever an Arrested Development fan. Absolutely, yeah. But there, there was like a, a thing in the background where it was like a he Steve Lieber drew the uh, the stair car, mm-hmm. and it was like a, it was like a Wayne. He put like a Wayne logo on it instead of the Bluth one. I'm like, yeah. Bluth Wayne is sitting right there for you to use. So fucking call it Bluth Wayne. Yeah, Bluth Wayne. Yeah. So they did, and so I I, yeah. I can take credit for that. I think it's the only thing I can take credit for. And then Matt can take credit for 90% of my career. Right. <laughs> um, well, I don't want to, I don't want to keep you much longer. I can, I can stick around for another half an hour if we need. Oh, no, it's okay. I mean, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm almost through all my questions. So unless I can, I can, I can answer some of the questions of the, uh, the commenters. Too, yeah, we can take, we can take questions from the chat. Yeah, yeah no problem. Uh, if anyone, I'm going to go back and see if there was anything I, I missed. Anything worthwhile. Um, yeah, it's got to be worthwhile. Um, it's got to be worthwhile. Okay, well, here's here's one. Uh, Legion of Commerce asks, was failsafe planned for absolute power back when you first started writing Batman? No. Mm. Um, but also, yes. In the mm. sense that, like, I, I knew we were building the character up to kind of be... Um, uh, like a major antagonist for the superheroes at the at the end of this. So we kind of, we kind of had an inkling that there was going to be a kind of an event that would kind of come from this at some mm-hmm. point. Um, but it wasn't called absolute power and um, Mark wasn't writing it. And so, um, but then, yeah, maybe about a year ago when we really started to kind of plan it out and, and, and we wanted to make sure that all of our stories kind of lined up for this kind of summer event. Um, that's when it all really kind of came together. But yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, it took a lot of planning over the past few years and it, the, things changed, you know, uh, some of our pitches went well, some didn't, and we kind of had to like figure out, um, yeah, kind of the best way to feed into the event. So, yeah. So he was always meant to be, uh, like a bad guy in an event. We just didn't know exactly what the event was, but we were all setting up a lot of kind of Amanda Waller stuff. So it kind of revealed itself a year or two ago. And we're like, Oh, okay, this is, we can actually work towards something now. 
Right. Yeah. Awesome. It's been fun being a part of an event like this. Yeah. From from that kind of planning level, because I've only ever done Devil's Reign, where it was a very much a Daredevil story, and like other things can kind of tie in, but it was very self-contained. And I've done like tie-in issues for things before, mm -hmm. but to actually like kind of realize that like all of our main books, we could we could work our stories in such a way that they would all kind of funnel towards this event that you know Mark and Damore are just killing. Like I've seen a lot of pages from it. It's just gorgeous. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do your friends call you bro tato chip? Um, mostly my parents. Oh, okay. Which is really weird because I'm like, I'm not their brother. I'm their son. But I guess there's no, um, I, they could call me son chip, but. Hey, yeah, there you neither, go. Neither of them have figured that out yet. So they just keep calling me bro tato chip. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like another one of Matt Fraction's ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Katie K pop junkie asks, what other characters do you want to write a dong story for? Oh, that's, uh... that's a very specific question. Yeah. Um, and by other, I'm trying to think what the original one was. Well, I think that's when we were talking about, uh, white tree and, uh... mm, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a, it tends to be a creator owned thing. So, yeah. uh, so for, in terms of other characters, like I can't really write a spider dong story or a bat dong story or Captain America dong story. I just, that, that's illegal. So, but I want to, so, I mean, I guess that's the question. Yeah. I want to do that for all of them. Yeah. I, I, and I expect we'll see a bit more in whisper queen. Yeah. There's dong orgy. Good. There's dong. Good stuff. Uh, Phil asks, at what point in a new a new book slash character success does Marvel or DC notice and ask for more? I don't know because I've never had a successful anything. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, that's, that's kind of that's a hard one because yeah, um, like you with a book, you know it's successful and Marvel wants more when they keep letting you do the book. So mm -hmm. like Daredevil, I end up writing like sixty one issues <clears throat> of that title across a variety of things. Um, so, and Marvel would have gladly had me keep going, um, but I was, I ended it. Um, so yeah, that's how you know, <laughs> the fact that they let you <laughs> do it month to month. Right. Um, and in terms of- They don't fire you, they don't fire you. Right? Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah. Um, in terms of character stuff, like uh, Electra's Daredevil has continued on afterwards, which is mm -hmm. nice and seeing her pop up in places in that costume has been um cool and one of the first times i had a thing kind of work well enough that it showed up in other books was um i used to write spectacular spider-man which is like the secondary spider-man book so you can't really do much there because it's the secondary book like amazing spider-man where, where all the big things happen but i end up doing like a an identity reveal with j jonah jameson and peter parker um uh, which I was really happy with, and I justified it because I'm like, you could do good stories out of this. And that's been fun to see because uh, almost immediately Dan Slott picked that up in Amazing Spider-Man. So to see that kind of reflected in that book was kind of my first cool continuity moment. And then to see um, Nick Spencer afterwards really play with that a lot uh, was super fun. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I actually just thought of something because um, you mentioned secondary book. So uh, of course, Batman, you know, I don't know if you call it a secondary book or just like an adjacent book, but Detective Comics, mm -hmm. do you have much um, in terms of like which Rom V's writing right now, right? Do you have much, I guess, back and forth with him and what you guys are doing? Not, um, not that much. Like an, initially, yes, because we were kind of presented to each other. We came in, I mm -hmm. think, at the same time. So like we presented each other with kind of what we were thinking what we were doing right. and his his thing was such a nice epic gothic self-contained story i'm like oh great like, fuck, just go do your thing like um i wasn't concerned about continuity i'm just like well wherever yours fits it fits wherever mine fits it fits like the, both the stories are very relentless so it's kind of hard to find the spot where batman would take a break and go over here and do what he's doing right. detective or vice versa yeah. so I've, I've just been kind of reading it as a fan um and like once in a while, and I'm like, oh, actually, I, I kind of need to use Two Face for something, and I know you're using them. Like, do you have another plan? So, so we'll we'll have messages about kind of specific things if we know things are happening. Yeah. Um, 
um but 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 that's about it yeah i i i get a lot of stuff from because batman appears in so many other things that like yeah you know of course. um it's usually up to the editor to make sure that that lines up and yeah. um and luckily jorge and i are usually pretty far ahead on batman so most people can like aren't like thrown for a loop when they pitch a thing and mm-hmm. find out that they can't use it like too late because that yeah. happened to me as a writer where i'll, I'll have a script done and then yeah. something will will immediately happen in another series and I have to rewrite it. Like, so yeah, that can be a pain. Wow. Yeah. I hadn't even considered that, but yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I, ha- I have been waiting for you to get to two face. Hopefully that, that will happen sooner. I've got, I mean, I don't have a, well, some giant two face story, but, um, uh, he does make an appearance in an upcoming issue and, um, is drawn by a classic comic artist that I love. Hmm. Um, and I just saw some of the art for today, so I'm super excited. It's a, it's a nice little teaser. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, if Batman doesn't work out, there's always money in the banana stand. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, a, more like the dong stand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marcus, circumstances, can I please have public do- more public domain? Yes, if you're a paid subscriber to my Substack, you already know that there's issues 6, 7, and 8 are... Uh, available there well eight is half available there um so they're they're being done i want to get um uh, a little bit more ahead before they kind of hit comic shops so i don't Mm -hmm. end up screwing up uh uh the release order so you'll 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 be getting news about that really soon actually yep and there you go guys if you haven't signed up for chips substack newsletter which is called it's chips newsletter all right uh you should and with the paid subscription you get access to some of his comics, such as Bat Public Domain and Captara, and uh, oh, that's another one, Captara, which um, I, I I'm not done that. I've, I'm still chipping away at it. Oh, I see what you did is, there. Is that is that another one that you're kind of done with, or or that's or yeah, like, you know, yeah. That was that yeah. was a situation where like we did the first five issues a long time ago, mm-hmm. and then real life kind of got in the way, and uh, the artist Kagan had to make actual money to feed his family. Because mm-hmm. somehow comics <laughs> don't necessarily make a lot of money. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so yeah. Um, uh, around the mm-hmm. time a few years ago where um, I was doing my Substack and then Substack approached a bunch of comic creators uh, with a grant, basically money to kind of make comics for the platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, as soon as that was a thing, I was like, well, I'm using that to finish this. So I was able to kind of pay Kagan the money that he deserves not the money that is offered comics. <laughs> right. And um, so he was able to kind of finally wrap up the story because it's been hanging over his head and my head for a long time. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, being able to get those extra six issues to kind of complete it was uh, super satisfying. So, yeah, the collection for that comes out in the, a couple of weeks, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Digger Jim, great question here. If you were asked to cast Newburn for a TV show, who would you pick? I guess for easy. Well, I guess for... for uh, East Newburn and and uh and Emily and Emily I, yeah this guy yeah hundred percent uh that's, that's a tricky cool. one because uh I don't like answering those questions because there's always there's always stuff happening in terms of like TV shows and things getting made and um I don't want to say well I like this actor and then another actor comes on board and then I'd be like well actually they're pretty good too so yeah I'd be good with them. <laughs> <laughs> also the thing is is like if they made it let's say newburn got options and it actually went into production are they coming to you and be like who should play newburn or do you think it's just like no we i think we got this i mean the, there are discussions that happen for sure yeah. when, when you're kind of at that level um um because newburn has been kind of in development out of development in development um mm-hmm. even before the comic hit the stands weirdly okay um I wrote a pilot script for it as well, uh, which was kind of fun because I'd never done that before. But, you know, they paid me uh, more money than comics pays. I'm just like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll try that. Um, So there were a lot of discussions at that moment as to who they should approach to play Newburn. So Mm -hmm. it was shocking. There were a lot of big names being thrown out and a lot of kind of large actors that were uh, kind of approached. Um, uh, And as most things kind of fell apart, everyone I was dealing with got fired. (laughs) And then the new people came in. They're like, "What is this?" I'm like, "Right, oh, it's my book." They're like, "Yeah, you can have it back." I'm like, "Great, I'll just go sell it again." 
<laughs> it's kind wow. of funny, like the, the economics of these things, because like yeah. New Burn as a comic, it does okay. Um, I don't really make money on it. Technically, I lose money because I pay all the people who produce the backups. So mm. any money I make just kind of goes there. Yeah. Um, uh, Jacob makes decent money, um, but not like, you know, not like go buy a new car kind of money, right? Um, so the kind of the way you justify making the comic is when those deals happen, because now I'm just like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm not making anything on the comic, but like we just made X amount of dollars on the Hollywood stuff to do with it. So that helps feed the comic. So the comic was able to kind of keep going because we made those kind of early sales to the big, you know, companies. Well, I hope something happens with it eventually because like, I think it's like, it's already just, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's kind of adaptation. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Just say the words that are there and like, yeah, but yeah, it's like, that's understandable, especially with, with Hollywood stuff, like as soon as new people get involved, I know you might as well just forget it because they're not. I know new people when when you say people get fired or you know new people come into uh, like a studio situation, it's like they've got their own things that they're yeah they want to put yeah. their own stamp on a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, it kind of worked out really well because I'm like I got the experience of it, I got paid for it, and then and then they gave me the rights back. So I'm like, oh great. <laughs> this is fantastic so yeah we can go kind of make it elsewhere yeah um, but yeah all that stuff like it's not you know you don't make the comic to make the tv show no you make the, you make the tv show to make the comic in a weird right. way right like, yeah that, yeah that, that makes fun sense making the comic actually before i get to to bronze age's question uh because you mentioned the backups and every issue of, of new burn you had i guess i think it was like three or four different backups that yeah. went over the span now um from different creators did now were those um those creators those comics were those uh you know picked by you or is that something that allison brought in or they were um... i mean it was a combination of both um mm -hmm. uh, they're definitely kind of writers and creators that like i i knew or knew of or enjoyed their work that um yeah. i would suggest and allison would have names as well especially for the art side of things um yeah that's been super satisfying like like um, being able to have these kind of these backup stories that are not necessarily in the same world, but kind of have the same vibe. Yeah. Um, like Amy Chase wrote the one, the Dungeons and Dragons one that's been running um, in the in the last few issues. And it's like, I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. So for me, it's like been an education uh, yeah. and to have a story that like, I clearly wouldn't be able to write <laughs> in right. here yeah. has been really fun. And then, you know, the, 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 the series before, um, David Brothers and Nick Dragota doing their kind of their black and mm -hmm. white kind of crime thing. It's yeah. gorgeous. It's beautiful. And like yeah, they work so really well cool. together. Yeah. You know, I kept saying to to David that like it's like poetry, like the way the panels and the words kind of work together. Mm -hmm. Um that was that was really great. And like I've heard a few stories about people like seeing those and realizing, oh well, we could use this artist or this writer for this project. Like mm -hmm. that works for this. Like that's been really satisfying too, just seeing that um things kind of blossomed out of some of these projects yeah awesome yeah, yeah I, know. I thought those were all great and yeah they were a really nice addition to to that I like to as a backup story i felt they all they all kind of fit uh definite and it was great to kind of give those creators some uh, additional exposure absolutely yeah and there's, i mean yeah um yeah, it's just been nice. I'm just thinking about all of them now. Like Casey Gilly and Sue Lee did another kind of a black and white story at the uh, the Coney Island Park, and that mm -hmm. was that was super awesome. And I want to do more stuff with. Um, it's also you know selfish on my part because I'm like seeing these artists work. I'm like, oh, maybe I could work with them. Like yeah, Sue Lee, right. I'd love to do something with her again. Mm -hmm. um, she she drew one of the uh, one of the anthology stories in the Stillwater one shot as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some some great talent that's come on board, which is nice. Uh, speaking of Stillwater, you think you you'll ever work with uh, Mr. Ramon Perez uh, again in the future? I mean, I'd love to. Like, he's yeah. insanely talented and fast. Mm -hmm. um, he is. Um, but he's also he's got some of the ideas of his own too. Like, like he should probably just be writing and drawing for himself, mm -hmm. um, not being saddled with a sad sack Canadian fellow canadian like myself right <laughs> um 
Uh, Bronze Age Nerd, here we go. Uh, hey, Drac, hey, Chip, do you have any advice for writers wanting to get into writing comic scripts? Any tips or things you wish you knew starting out? I mean, the unfortunate thing is the, the, the big tip, <laughs> which is what I call my penis, yes, um, <laughs> is um, to learn to draw. Like, teach yourself to draw. Uh, yeah. Even if you don't think you're going to be good enough to get published, you could probably get yourself to the point where you can self-publish your, your work. Um, mm -hmm. One of my favorite success stories was the writer Ray Fox. Um, he used to come by our studio back in the early 2000s, and he was a writer looking for an artist, uh, but he couldn't find one, so he started to teach himself to draw at the age of, like, 30. And, like, his first drawings were not very good, um, but he got to the point where he could reasonably put together a comic and so he put together a little kind of zine comic um self-printed it went to san diego handed it to a bunch of editors with the caveat like i'm not really an artist but i'm a writer and here's my work and uh and he got hired by dc vertigo like they basically said we the story's great um we want to uh, do it over here and hire a new artist to draw it and and that started his whole career writing for dc and he wrote like batman stuff constantine justice league dark and then even then his art got better and so he he published some really beautiful graphic novels with oni press as well um and and that's again that's a writer who didn't know how to draw um so i always i always look to him as like a, a great success story uh because the other thing is like finding an artist like yeah right um, yeah, nobody, that's... nobody, nobody walks into Marvel in DC with just a bunch of scripts. Like, it's just, yeah, it's never happened. The yeah. only, the only writer I know who started off working at Marvel and then kept writing for Marvel was Dan Slott. He was like an intern there, and he wrote like okay. a few things and kind of worked his way in. Yeah. Literally, every other writer um, did their own thing All off right. to the side, or the smaller, yeah. smaller books, smaller publishers. Um, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure, cars. yeah, I'm pretty sure Dan Slot just annoyed everyone to the point they're like, all right, well, you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you have to be in the building to be able to do that, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, like, uh, and, and in terms of like learning to draw too, like if you look at Daredevil, so many of the writers on that book were also artists, like, like obviously Frank Miller, yeah, um, but Bendis was an artist, mm -hmm. Brew Baker. Okay self-published yeah. wrote and drew his own work uh and myself so it's like mm -hmm. yeah knowing how to draw it also makes you a better writer because you understand yeah, the page more that. i've seen a lot of scripts where i'm just like oh no artist can draw this like you've <laughs> you've totally messed it up like the layouts yeah. are never going to work yeah um, yeah so yeah it, it definitely helps to know how to draw yeah that's like in in my in my job uh sometimes um we work with architects and it's like, oh, you're clearly good at designing stuff, but you've obviously never built anything because, yeah. you know, that what you're showing me here, I don't know how to do that. And I don't think, you know, it, it's not going to work how you've drawn it. It's just, yeah, not. yeah. It's a pretty drawing, but yeah, it, it, it's not yeah. a reality. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, uh, Ignacio uh, says, Does Chip feel scared or honored about talking with Dracula? I would be shitting my pants, as you should be, Ignacio. Yeah. Um, right. yeah, no, I don't think I'm scared mm -hmm. or right. intimidated, aroused, yeah. maybe. Like, there okay. is something about the eyes. No, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, th that's. But if I get too aroused, I shit my pants. So, like, if I, if you smell the shit, <laughs> it is not from fear. Yeah. I and then you see the, know that. if you see the balloons come you up see, the screen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you you see, know. <laughs> if you see the balloons, you know, you know exactly what's happened. Yeah. Um, before we go, there was one other thing I wanted to mention just cause it's one of my favorite things you you've worked on, which is a three video crash course on comic book making called chip class <laughs> yep. right there starring yourself and, and Alison tool who we've, we've been talking about your editor, Alison. Yeah. There's my long, my long suffering editor, Alison O'Toole holding your Eisner award. Oh, for, she's for wonderful. Main. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting her last year as well. Uh, she's great. And uh, as you can see from that photo, obviously, has a sense of humor. Uh, she, in fact, broke your Eisner Award. That's true. Insane. And I had a meeting with her today. And when I was on that <laughs> meeting, I, I couldn't help but notice that like her hair is exactly the hair I had in grade six. 
Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I learned a lot. In fact, everything I know about making comics, I learned from chip class. And people have told me, oh, read how to draw comics the Marvel way or watch David Finch's tutorials. But after watching chip class, I feel like I got the basics down. Yeah. However, because I feel like there's more to this whole thing you're not telling us, uh, more tricks of the trade, will, will we ever get any new episodes of Chip Class? I would like to. Uh, yeah. Chip Class is a very special thing in the sense that I spent all the money from Substack on it. Um, <laughs> money well spent. Which is maybe not the best use of, <laughs> of money. Yeah. Um, so, so the tricky thing is, uh, financially, it costs me a lot to make them, and uh, mm -hmm. also financially, I make zero dollars from it. So, uh, it's a little tricky to justify to my wife when she's yeah. like, "We need to renovate the basement." I'm like, "I know, yeah. but I need to educate people about comics." Right? Um, you know, which of us is right? Yeah. It, if look, if you're trying to convince me that it's a bad idea to spend all your money on what's essentially a joke, you're talking to the wrong person because. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely worth it. Uh, I, I I think so too. The older you get and the closer you get to retirement, for some reason, um, it's it no longer feels that way. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Ugh. I I I, <laughs> uh, I got one more thing, one more slide to show before that. Uh, 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 bear with me for five seconds. I got to grab some. Four, three, two, uh, one. Yeah, it's Dang, right. Son of a bitch. <sighs> well, what am I supposed to do? Check out Sex Criminals, the complete edition. I'm a cheeky guy, so the U has been scratched out, or the O's been scratched out, so it looks like a U, which is um, uh, which means come, uh, as in ejaculate. I got it. Uh, oh, good. So, so I don't know if you remember uh, this. Um, I did. I've shown people this before. This is a. Uh, this is a, our our collaboration. Our collaboration that you had no say in. Yeah, yeah. Where where <clears> you <throat> drew uh, because you'd already drawn Daredevil here, very handsome yep. looking Daredevil, yep. and I drew a very handsome looking Chip Zdarsky. Yeah, right? it was your chance to show me up, right? Because I spent like two minutes on a drawing, and then you spent three right. hours on one, and so you make me look like garbage. Uh -huh. I spent maybe a minute and 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was like a minute 30. Anyhow, I want to get the chat's reaction. Who do you think a, a better did a better chip? Uh, Zdarsky drawing me or Jorge Jimenez? Uh, which I'm one's more? I am so more mad about that. I'm so mad about that. Let me tell you what the backstory was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was in New York and it was a private signing, a CGC signing where the, like everyone that mailed in books, yeah. CGC people put them in front of you and you sign it and do the drawings. Mm -hmm. And one of the requests was for me to draw Jorge. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, all right. And I knew the other request was when Jorge came in later that day that he was going to be drawing me. So I did this very lovely drawing of Jorge. He just and very then nice. I leave. Yeah. And then, like, uh, during the weekend, somebody comes up to me. He's like, oh, hey, um, I'm the guy that got those drawings. I just wanted to show it to you. And, he, like, how much does Jorge hate me? Like, how much? Like, what have I done to him in the scripts? Like, I've clearly, like, offended him with the way I write Batman or something. Or maybe my scripts aren't coming in fast enough or there's too many panels on a page. Because that is absolutely the meanest drawing of me that will ever exist. Now, here, here's what I think you're not taking into consideration here, Chip, is that I don't think he hates you at all. But the thing is, is that Jorge looks in the mirror every day and sees himself. So I think everyone else kind of just looks like that to him, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, that, that right? makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> now I get it. Fuck. Yeah, I was thinking there's Horrible. science behind this. Yeah. Oh, so mad. Yeah. Thanks for reminding um, me of that. Oh, you're welcome. Um, anyways, I, I'm I'm through with all my questions. Has anyone else has got any uh, any questions? You you got anything else you wanna you wanna say? We we plug the sex criminals and news yeah, out. go go oh. buy sex criminals. Mm -hmm. Complete edition. I drew it. I didn't write it. So if you hate my writing, you're in luck because there's a real writer on this one. Right. Hooray! There you go. That's yeah. all I got. 
Uh, just, uh, just keep supporting my work so I can funnel that money back into chip class videos. Yeah, we need more of, of those guys. Instead of my basement renovation, which is never going to happen at this point. Yeah, well, if uh, if more chip class means an unfinished uh, basement, that's a sacrifice. I think that we're all. I've got oh, this, I've got a bad eye sty or something. Hoping. Oh no. Yeah, that's no good. I think it's just because I put my finger in my bum and then I put it in my eye. I think that's oh, what the geez. doctor said to me. He said you shouldn't do that. I'm like, well, <laughs> well, how, I don't I don't understand. How am I supposed to live then? Yeah, you know, I don't think you're supposed to do that, but um, that's rough. Oh, geez. Well, maybe there's like a cream or something you can put on that. I don't know. Are you supposed to rub cream into your eyes? I don't think so. I'll I'll go through the house and I'll just find a bunch of creams and I'll see which one works. <laughs> did, did you ever see that kids in the hall sketch? Where this guy just keeps thinking to himself. Salt in the eye. Salt, don't put salt in the eye. Don't put salt in the eye. Put salt in the eye. That classic Kevin McDonald scream. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, kids in the hall. So the best. Good. Um, and so I think this, that's probably a good place to wrap this up. Uh, but Chip, once again, thank you for joining me. It's been a, an absolute pleasure and thank a blast. You. Thank you, actual Dracula. And uh, maybe, make it, maybe I can have you back sometime. Nope. Okay. Well, then I guess I'll just have to ask Matt Fraction. Great. Real writer. All right. Okay. Wait. Oh, uh, was it? Oh, there's another question in there. Oh, there is. Uh, Chip, any chance of you writing one of Marvel's new Ultimate titles? Fun story. They approached okay. me to do Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, how about that? Yeah. All right. And uh, and I said no. Good. Because I hate making money. Yep. But the real reason was um, they sent me the pitch for it. I'm just like, well, this is like, this is really cool, but it's like, it's very much a Hickman thing, because mm -hmm. like okay. obviously he he wrote the kind of the initial pitch. Yeah, I was just like, why don't you just get him to write it? Like this is clearly his thing. Like he should just write it. And so I convinced them to not hire me and just to go hire him. And then uh, I was on a call with him, and uh, he said, thank you for turning that down because he's having so much fun writing it. I'm like, great. And he gets to work with Marco, who's like the best because i worked with them for like four years on daredevil so i'm actually i'm quite happy that uh they're doing that together because people seem to love it which is nice and it's great it's a great comic but it does sound like uh maybe another classic chip bad decision you, uh... i mean uh, financially yes yeah 100 <laughs> percent. right <laughs> i could have made a bunch of money and i decided mm -hmm. to not do that but you it just made, it just made the sense noble like, thing you did the noble thing i did I the noble thing yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Um, all, right. all right. Well, again, thank you, Chip. Thank you, Chat, for joining right. us. I gotta go uh, make dinner for my Canadian wife. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'll make one last announcement. Um. Uh, guys, this Sunday, check out you. You recently spoke with uh, fellow YouTuber West Coast Dave Avengers. Oh yeah, I had a really nice yeah. talk with him. And and that it was my it was my favorite interview in the past week or so. Yeah, until today, right? My favorite interview in the past week or so. <laughs> Anyways, that interview is going to drop on uh, drop on Sunday. And check this out, guys. It's going to blow your mind, Chip. So you spoke with Chip, and uh, or you spoke with Chip. You Jesus spoke with Christ. Dave. Yeah. You spoke with Dave, and I spoke with you. And guess what? On April the twelfth, uh, I'm going to speak with Dave. Th I mean, there we go. I'm my next. My next. Um, uh, victim, uh, my next guest on Interview the Dracula, and I haven't had time to make a proper title card to realize that. But this no, is no, no, I'm no, having. I'm going to be talking with Dave. We're coming full circle. West Coast Avengers is my next guest on April 12th uh, because we're going to be right. talking about his channel and his podcast, which is great, and uh, West Coast uh, Avenger Con, which is coming up next month, and I'm taking part in. So uh, how about that? But before that, uh, this Sunday, check out if you haven't had enough chip today, go check out Dave's interview on on Sunday. So all right, sounds that. good. And uh, yeah, th I think that'll do it. Thank you, everyone. And um, let's see, I'll play an I'll play an outro video. Why not uh, to 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 play us out to end the show, right? Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna uh, leave. There it is. All right. Thank you, chat, and I'll see see you next time. You yeah. can't leave. You can't leave until I'm after. just gonna go.
Don't no. do that yet. The chat can leave. You can't leave. Hey, chat! Do you want to be the snowman? Go! Okay, bye! Glory to you and your house. <laughs>